Mandelson and the leading Brexiteer one-time Tory leader Ian Duncan Smith. Uh, a, a week ago, uh, Peter Mandelson, it looked as if Theresa May was facing a really serious challenge in the Commons on the customs union, which might have blown a, a hole through her entire strategy. Has this speech removed most of that threat? No, I don't think it has, because it's raised a whole series of questions uh, about how she is going to arrive at the destination that she's described. And I think she has described the destination better than she's ever done before. But she posits two leaps of faith about how she's going to get there. Uh, that the European Union is going to accept not only that we're going to sort of cherry pick sectors in, good, in goods trade, but according to her interview, parts of sectors as well. Uh, I think that's possible. Uh, but the EU has already said that it's not going to accept that. And the second leap of faith is uh, that when it comes to regulations, we're going to look for mutual recognition, not alignment, but mutual recognition, which we are then going to be free to diverge from further down Actually, the course. Yes. I don't believe the EU uh, will accept that and in a month mm, of Sundays. As, as, as a past commissioner yourself, when they say we will not put up with this, you, th you, you don't think they're bluffing? Because a lot of people in, in, in Westminster think they will eventually no. fold. No, mm. uh, Andrew, they're basing this on the legal basis of the mm. single market, the rules and the established trade policies of the European Union. And that's why what Theresa May is doing is trying to dance on the head of a pin that simply doesn't exist. Sounds very painful indeed. Yes. <laughs> it would Duncan... be painful for the country, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid, as a result. Yeah. Ian Duncan Smith, um, what's gone on with the Brexiteers after this speech? I mean, she said that we were going to lose some aspects of access to European markets, we will be paying in, and there will be some areas of life where the European court will still be effective. Uh, and we'll start to look. And yet there's been not a cheap of criticism from your side. Is that because you eventually want to get rid of her and put in one of your own? So no. you can diverge properly in due course. Far too, uh, <coughs> far too de devious. No, not at all, Andrew. I think the general view was, and I saw, <coughs> sorry, I saw the speech before it was made, uh, and I reached the conclusion that it was a very good balance speech. I mean, she's restated... You've all been squared, haven't you? No, well, she's restated the key elements, which is that we're leaving the single market, customs yeah. union, taking back our laws, courts, money, all the rest of it, borders and money. Those are now locked in. But the question really is always then, around those, how do you adjust your relationship with the European Union? And what she's offered the European Union, I think, is what I call common sense and practical solutions to some of the issues they've talked about. Of course, there's going to be an area where in you know, a period of time, whatever, the British uh, industry might want to stay. It takes us longer to get ready for things. We might not want change. We may want to align to a greater or lesser degree. <coughs> she's right, by the way, a lot of this is international agreement anyway, yeah. environment, for example, but full of international stuff, so is manufacturing of cars, etc. These are all big international agreement areas, so not a big problem. But the key point is, but Parliament we, ultimately decides, and UK courts then adjudicate. Absolutely right, <coughs> but we will not get, quote, the exact same benefits in terms of market access after Brexit as we have now. Well, it, we won't, for that's for obvious reasons, because we're not ah, in the ah. single market. But the key question is, does that affect your ability to trade, and does that mean that you mm. will trade less well, or will you see your trade increase? There's a very good example yeah. of this. America doesn't, isn't in the single market. <clears throat> but their trade with the European Union has risen faster than the UK's. But look at President Trump's reaction yeah. to that overnight. <clears throat> yes, I mean, but my point is no, very simply, no. the, the answer to your question is no. in all these other countries that are not in the single market, they actually manage to raise their trade and to do trade deals outside. And it's quite an interesting point here, and here's an ex-commissioner for trade, that in, since uh, up, up until 2015, which was the last year before we actually voted to leave, the EU did $7.7 .7 trillion mm. of okay. trade. Countries like Switzerland and Singapore did way more. I think Switzerland did nearly 40 trillion mm. and Singapore did nearly 50 trillion more. And that shows you big isn't always necessarily powerful. Peter Mandelson. The United States is apparently the government's chief target to do one of these big, ambitious global trade deals. Mm. President Trump has said overnight that free trade deals are very stupid. I don't think that augurs very well for, uh, the, uh, for the negotiation. But the point... That's, that's a fair... That's true. Well, the, what Mr. Trump often uh, tweets out uh, after having watched his Fox program isn't always necessarily what actually yeah, happens. But the point is this... He yeah. knows very well let, that a good trade explain, deal between the UK let me explain and uh, how, USA let me is explain, a good idea. Let me explain how this works. 
you can only get a free trade agreement, and they're very hard to negotiate and take years to do so, if there's a sort of balance of benefit uh, mm -hmm. for both sides. Yeah. When it comes to the United States, they've made it absolutely clear that their target is Britain's agricultural market. They want their chicken, their hormone-injected beef, their GMOs in our market, which Michael Gove has said already no to. We want, in the U.S. market, access to their public procurement. This is a president who... We've got financial services. No, 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 no. We have we plenty do. of financial services. No, we don't. Now, hold on a moment. We have plenty of financial services, and what we can get extra, we can eke out from commercial diplomacy. Yes, what we really want... Hear me out, please. What we really want is access to public procurement. And this is a president who says, America first. The chances of our getting access to an opened-up public procurement sector in America are near zero. So we're, but, we're but, jumping out, we're jumping out yeah. of, the, of the common market okay, yeah. into a really quite unfriendly world at the moment. Yeah, but I come back to the point that I made. It's quite fascinating. Of all of those trade ar arrangements made by small countries like Switzerland, like Chile, far more trade arrangements, far bigger value than the EU is managed in the same yeah, period. But hang on a second. But they're smaller economies hang on, hang than on, the yes, EU. Yes, but hang on a second. Of course. <laughs> they've, but Chile, they, Switzerland, hang on, great. They have, yeah, Yes, but you, your great comment yeah. was that you can't do trade deals unless you're in a big block. You no. said being in a big block gives you clout. Ian. Hang on a second. Uh, you, I didn't interrupt you, so just let me finish this point. So what I'm saying here is these countries have done far more far-ranging trade deals. And by the way, in all the trade arrangements made by the EU, only 68% include financial services. Yeah. In all of those trade deals, nearly 90% yeah. include financial I, I've services. I've just spent the last week in so China. So I'm sorry. I've just really spent the ridiculous. last week in China. I talked to officials in China. I said, what about a free trade deal between China and Britain? They looked at me. Why do we need a trade deal? Britain's already open to us. Why do we need more? Yeah. And what's more, yeah. if you think you're going to come and yeah. land your service, uh, into our market, no thank you, because that would mean our having to open yeah. up to everyone else. Before and, that, I went to India. On, on it's note, the same we're, story we're, in we're, India. We're out of time. <laughs>